Welcome everyone to our third virtual pre-departure session for today. And this session I'm super excited about. We have three of our wonderful international students from the University of Tasmania. One of them is off camera due to technical issues, so apologies for that. But we've got Yuan here, we've got Ellie, and we've also got Rahat who is on the line. So he will speak by unmuting himself. Unfortunately, he couldn't get his webcam working, which is completely okay during this time with online uh, world at the moment. So today's session I'm really excited about because um, I want wanted to, our students to speak about their life in Tasmania um, and how they found it and what are they currently studying and you know how is it going so far and you know a lot of our future students have so many questions about that they're not sure about the lifestyle here in Tasmania and how is it like compared to their back home back from where they come from so you know um, I'm myself a UTAS alumni I was an international student myself for six years and you know transitioning from a different country to here was quite different and um, you know you have to adapt to it you have to um, make sure you're you know, you're understanding the culture and how do you fit in? And those are all sort of questions that students have in their back of their mind when they when they come to a new country. It doesn't matter if it's just Tasmania, anywhere in the world. So um, I think it's a really important session for a session for students to listen to. Um, so thanks for everyone for joining. I will go on to my next slide. So um, I'll start off with Yuan maybe. So yeah. Yuan. You can introduce yourself. Uh, can you tell us what are you currently studying? What did you previously study before coming to Tasmania maybe, or if you were in the mainland? And why did you choose the University of Tasmania? Sure. Hello everyone, I am Yuan, I'm from China. Currently I'm studying graduate diploma of journalism, media and communication. Um, before I came here, I was studying uh, radio and television journalism in China. Um, the reason why I choose Tasmania is because um, um, I quite enjoy the life uh, in small town. It's very easy to uh, assess the nature. And when I was living in a small town in Victoria, and I met some travelers, they have been to Tasmania, and they said, Tasmania is a pretty good place if I enjoy this kind of life. And then, yeah, since I was thinking to study and you know improve myself, I think hmm, that's cool. If the place like this have university, why I don't come here? And here am I. <laughs> and yeah. here you are, and we're so happy to have you. That's fantastic. You. So were you studying before in Australia? No, before I was doing the uh, working holidays. So um, I was okay. traveling around the mainland. I've been Northern Territory. I spent one, almost one year in the Great Ocean Road because I really enjoy the wow. you know, small place can access like waterfalls, uh, beaches, and also like walking tracks. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And I guess, you know, it's a testament to us. You, you've you done all the travel across all of Australia, but you decided to come to Tasmania. So I guess we're very lucky to have you. Um, you. I'll move on to Ellie. Um, Ellie, can you um, tell us what you're currently studying and what did you previously study and why you, Taz? Hi, everyone. I'm Ellie and I'm from Vietnam. Um, I have been in Tasmania for nearly two years. And before that, I lived uh in queensland for 1.5 years uh yeah uh this is my first degree so i didn't have i didn't have other rivers like study area uh i currently doing accounting before i'm still doing accounting as well uh i choose to new tasks because this is the only one university in tasmania and yeah is very big and I have many options. I can come to Launceston, there's still UTAS there. Mm. Even in Cradle Coast, there's still UTAS there. So I feel like, yeah, it's very interesting. I can find many friends studying in UTAS, the same as me, wherever I go. And uh, I have the same ho hobbies as uh, Yuan. Like I love the natural environment as well. Uh, when I live in Brisbane, in Queensland, is still a bit 
busy and crowded like Melbourne and Sydney. And then when I came here, I fell in love with that. So now if you want to ask me, like, okay, I come to mainland, I would say I, I prefer traveling there, but I don't want to spend like long term stay there because now I think I love a natural. I love a peaceful environment like Tasmania. That's good. Yeah. That's good. And I think, yeah, and exactly, you know, like just like you once said and yourself, Ellie, like even when I was a student, you know, I came here um, from a big city life, you know, and um, and you guys know how it is like back home, you know, it's busy, it's hustling. And when you come to Tasmania first, it's very quiet. And so it's a big change to to how it is. But I, I, I studied 12 years ago here and things have dramatically changed since when you guys have started studying here. And there has been such a big transition from 12, 13 years ago to now. And I think now um, we had a session yesterday with uh, some of our international students. They made a really good point. You know, they said um, it's not really busy here and it's not very quiet either. It's in, in between. And if you're the type of person that likes that travel and outdoor um you know, activities and you just like the nature. Um, it's got a bit of both, which I like about Tasmania. So that's that's really good point. I'll go on to Rahat. So if you want to unmute yourself and also Rahat, tell us, um, you know, uh, where's your home country and what was your previous study? What are you currently studying and why University of Tasmania? Hello everyone, this is Rahat. Uh, I'm from Bangladesh and I would like to apologize because my webcam isn't working. Um, I'm currently studying Bachelor of Psychological Science, so I'm doing a major in Marketing and a major in Psychology and a minor in Behavioral Science. Before going for Psychology, I actually came to University of Tasmania to study Mechanical Engineering for a semester and then moved to Psychology. And before that, I was studying back in Bangladesh doing my high school and, and, and college. Now, the reason why I actually choose Tasmania, like once you need to choose a university or a place, you need to look at a lot of factors. And for me, ranking was one of the priorities. So the University of Tasmania at that time was in the top 2% in the whole world. And at the same time, the, the tuition fee wasn't very high. And if you're going to Australia to study, once you compare a lot of the states like, like Sydney, Melbourne, Tasmania, Northern Territory, the living cost in Tasmania was the most reasonable at the time. Also, when I'm coming from Bangladesh, where we don't enjoy a lot of good air and water, compared to that, Tasmania had the best water, best air in the whole world. And at the same time, I found an article in 2013 which said that Tasmania is the second friendly city in the world. But now, once I moved here, I feel like it's the best city in the world. And also, it has the lowest crime rate in whole Australia. And like in 2020, it was regarded as the first number one adventure destination according to National Geographic. So I like I'm a very outgoing guy. I need to I want to get my education in a, in a peaceful environment in a suburban area where I can enjoy my life and at the same time study. And as a matter of fact, I choose to University of Tasmania. And that is amazing. And um... You know, it's amazing to hear, you know, how students have different drivers for what what makes them decide to come study here at the University of Tasmania. Every, every student is different and every student has different ambitions and wants and dreams. So that is that is really, really good points, guys. Thanks so much. Um, we'll move on to the next um, slide where it's pretty much about your experience. So, um, Yuan, I'll go back to you. So. Um, <laughs> You know, you can talk about any of those points here. You can um, talk about your best experience. I know you're a traveler, so um, what has been some of your best experiences here? How can you compare Tasmania back to China? Um, you know, has your family visited before? And how was it like actually coming into Tasmania at the start? And how did you find your way around things? Sure. Okay, so um, since um, the reason I came here is like, you know, uh, first it's like, you know, I like the nature here. So I would like to talk about like the uh, experience in Tasmania uh, in terms of travel. Yeah, uh, I've been um, someplace in Tasmania, not all of them yet. I need to do more after I graduate. Yeah, <laughs> uh, such as the Cradle Mountain, 
wine glass bay, Launceston, yeah, and South An and uh, um, market around snack the area, Bruni Island, yeah. I think it's quite a big place already, yeah. I can't say I know uh, Tasmania so well, but I do know a little bit. <laughs> I yeah. think the best experience is like you know you can um you can make yourself uh to the nature with like within one hour driving or you know two hours driving to Cradle Mountain or just like half hour driving to the Mount Wellington. There there are so many walking tracks, so amazing you know uh natural views. Um, I still remember the time I went to the Cradle Mountain, the walking and the view was amazing. I still want to go back even I have been there. Mm. And also like for some people, if they don't have car, probably it's too far away, um, but yeah. they can still you know, find a way to there. Um, but if you are living in, I mean, in uh, Hobart, Mount Wellington is just right beside us. I mean, in the I city. know, right? I can say just in the city. Yeah, it's like half hour driving and then, yeah, here we go. So many walking tracks. So this weekend you can go to, um, uh, what's that, zigzag track. And next weekend, probably, if you want to go again, you can follow the other track and walk around a little bit. Yeah, so it's just so many activities you can you can join. Yeah, um, yeah, I think that's it. But uh, in terms of my family, they haven't got chance to visit here yet, you know. I've been here like because my degree is only for one year and I've been here one year and almost half a year we need to <laughs> quarantine because of the COVID-19 so unfortunately they haven't got chance to visit here however I got my partner here he was living in Melbourne and then he came to visit me oh he loves here and then he moved down since the lockdown, city lockdown, yeah. <laughs> anyway, oh. yeah. You can you can see how great is this place. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, You've sold yeah. it. <laughs> of course, I have done some like, you know, a hiking or similar event in China but at home as well. But it's just different. <laughs> it's just different. I, I don't know how to describe, but yeah. I think the distance must make, make sense. <laughs> distance. Yeah. And I think, yeah. you know, it's 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 really um even when I'm overseas, it's hard to explain how Tasmania is like to people who don't yeah. live here, um, yeah. unless you've actually generally lived here. So no, those are all fantastic um points. I'll move on to Ellie. So Ellie, how has your experience been so far and when you first arrived to Tasmania and yeah, go for it. Well, at first I'm quite jealous of Yuan because like she traveled a lot before like a work working holiday. I know. Work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my experience is a bit different because I didn't travel much before. Like apart from my country, I think Australia is just a third country that I been travel overseas so far. So I when I've been here, I before the first time I came here, I, I'd never been to Tasmania before. It's exactly my first time completely. I arrived when I arrived in Hobart. So even though I ha even though I heard people that it's quite cold here compared with the 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 state I lived before, you know, Queensland, which is similar weather as in Vietnam, like a bit warm. Yeah. And when I came here and I feel real cold <laughs> even though it's in summer, like Hobart welcomed me with a bit raining and sunny. It's kind of like a mixture, you know, that in summer in Hobart. So when I, I first came here, I said, okay, I have to repair well for the winter. <laughs> so it's my first impression when I come here. Yeah. And yeah. actually everything going so well, better than I expected. Like I thought I feel very cold. I can't adapt it. But, you know, if you just stay here for two months, you will know which one that you should repair for yourself. And yeah. it's really cool so far. It's a new experience. First time I s I'm get that close to the wallabies, you know. <laughs> I never oh, did yes. it. <laughs> yeah. I never touched kangaroo or wallabies in Queensland, even though it still seems in Australia. But you can do it in Tasmania. Yeah. Even my best experience mm. I told you when 
one day I study late in a library and I back home I saw one wallaby in front at the front yard of my house and just like welcome me <laughs> <laughs> and the flashlight and they're of my super car. friendly yeah but yeah. they're quiet they scare of me like if I just arrive but the first point is the front the light of my car like reflecting into their eyes and I'm at first I'm a bit startled as well yeah. <laughs> but actually they're very yeah they're very friendly they, they even scare of me they jump back yeah they the are yeah. yeah yeah that is amazing Ellie um I really yeah. liked it and we'll talk about some of the points later on because I can see some questions coming in from some students but I'll move on to Rahat um tell me a little bit about your experience and um how has it been like so far for you? Uh, thank you, Mona. Actually, talking about my experience in Tasmania is bringing back a lot of sweet memories. Uh, I can still remember the day I came to Hobart International Airport. Like it was a long flight from Dhaka to Singapore to Melbourne and then to Hobart. And you know, once you're in, on a foreign land, you don't know what's going to happen. But luckily for me, I actually booked for airport pickup by the University of Tasmania. So once I went to get my luggage, I can see a lot of students who are similar to me. They're wearing the university t university t-shirts and are, are like asking, like, are you guy? Are you this guy? Are you that guy? And they actually came to pick us up. So that was a really good initiative by the University of Tasmania. They offered all the students apple, water, juice, dairy milk. And then I found, and then I got to know that they have a factory for dairy milk in Tasmania as well well so it was a really welcoming environment from then and at the same time like Tasmania is like an island paradise. It's like a treasure island. You know, every day you find about a new place. Like once you go online, you'll find all these places as my friends have just told about, like Cradle Mountain, Mount Wellington. Those are all beautiful places. Russell Falls, trust me, those are all beautiful places. But Tasmania has so much more that people don't know about. So still, if you come, if you travel around, you will find a lot of good places from local travel travelers, local residents, and they're so friendly and helpful, they might tell you, hey, if you go to Eagle Hawk Neck, you can get a lot of fish, maybe you can do some salmon fishing. So it's about your interest, and you will find little, little secrets about Tasmania once you move on. And I wasn't able to bring my family to here to visit. However, if I compare my experience from here to back at home, Tasmanian life is really out outgoing really energetic like if you like trekking if you like riding a bike if you like climbing a rock or a mountain if you like kayaking if you want to paraglide whatever you want to do if you love adventure you will love Tasmania that's what I'm gonna say thanks for hard and you know um, I tell students it's all about the outdoors and you know, even if you were a type of person that wasn't into outdoors, I think Tasmania ends up making you like that. So, um, it, which is always a, which is always a good thing. I mean, it's difficult when you come from a city life. I think, um, you know, in a city, it's very different lifestyle. It's kind of it's exactly like how it is in living in Sydney and Melbourne. Um, you know, there's not much to do in terms of. As you said, half an hour drive, you're already you can do bush tra bush walking. You can, uh, you know, complete that track, another track, you know, and it's got so many different um, outdoor um, areas that you can go to. But at the same time, we've also got a city. Yeah, it's not a big city, and I always tell students, don't expect it to be skyscrapers. <laughs> don't expect it to be, you know, because that's where all when all of us come, majority of us who come from different cities, you know, I was born and raised in Abu Dhabi, you know, UAE, and it's all skyscrapers. We're known for that, you know, and same with China, you know, it, you know, a lot of the places, there's so many tall buildings. Well, Tasmania doesn't have that. So you know it's very different it's a different city life compared to a lot of other places even within Australia and I the point I also wanted to make I don't know if you guys agree but um, Tasmania itself is very different to other mainland states too so you know we we get a lot of um, for the students listening or agents you know we get a lot of people mainlanders traveling from um, Sydney, Melbourne to Tasmania, and it's like, oh my God, it's so different here. Um, whereas a lot of people have a perception from overseas that all of Australia is the same, 
but it's not. Um, Queensland looks the same. Tasmania, uh, sorry, Queensland looks different. Tasmania looks different. Even um, Australians themselves, they find yeah. it fascinating when they come here. And it's not just international students. And um, I just wanted to uh, talk a little bit about that. I know uh, we, we've touched um, points, but I'll get to this slide uh, first. But uh, second, but yeah, Yuan, do you have any points on that? Like you've tra you've traveled across, you know, um, most of um, uh, places around Australia. You find that as well, right? It's very different to each other. Yeah, I, I have actually. I have one fun story, like uh, to describe about yeah. a city in Tasmania, like uh, Mona mentioned. Like I, one friend shared a story with me when he first time come to Hobart. So he took a taxi from the airport to the city, and he told the taxi that he want to come to the city, but the taxi doesn't know. <laughs> so after <laughs> explaining for a while, so the taxi know, okay, my friends want to come to town. So go to town, not go to the city. <laughs> yeah, that, that's so good. That's good, it's Ellie. I'll take that. No, it's a town. It's, it's, it's a smaller condensed version of a city, you know. Yeah. Um, so it's quite interesting. Raha, do you have any comments on that? Uh, yeah, like, to be honest, Tasmania is not as densely populated as many other cities around the world. Like, I'm from Dhaka, Bangladesh, which is probably the most densely populated country in the world. So, compared to that, Tasmania, you might feel it's empty, but actually it's not. Like, the Australian lifestyle, the Australian dream is not about living in an apartment. You you live in a, in a house, there are houses nearby, most houses houses will be one story if it's near to the CBD areas then it's gonna be two story or three story but that's not that's gonna be a little bit rare and then you will have a little bit of garden a little bit of backyard to yourself so that's the lifestyle that we have here like it's a suburban kind of lifestyle you enjoy the nature you still we have very high speed internet we have all the technologies that make modern city lives enjoyable at the same time living in a more relaxed environment environment. No, that's really good, Rahat. And, um, you know, I think these slides with the photos we have shows the audience and most of our presentations have had beautiful snapshots of different parts of Tasmania. So it, it is really um, scenic views when you come here. But I'll move on to this next point. So in terms of activities, you know, and activities could be anything. It could be um, travel activities, um, it could be activities as part of the university, um, it could be that you're part of any societies or clubs that organize activities outside of universities, anything you think of in terms of activities. So Yuan, do you have anything, any comments on that? Yes, um, can I talk about my part-time jobs? <laughs> you can do that as much awesome. as you want. Yeah. I think um, it, it was a very cool experience. Uh, when I uh, came here, um, it was like March, April, and at that time, the Dark Morpho was recruiting. And luckily, I, I got a part-time job, like, you know, to cover uh, those period and then. And then I worked uh, behind the bar, like, you know, during the Dark Morpho in a very cool event. Wow. I mean, it's just like so cool. I think when people come to uh, Tasmania, they, they need to uh, pay attention, you know, get to know the local activities like the Mofo or, you know, mm. market, Bangay market. You can di discover so much, so much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would highly recommend like markets and these things. Yeah. <laughs> That's a really good point, Yuan. And I, you know, I also tell students that, uh, which exactly that you said, get to know the people, uh, get to know the locals as well. Um, you know, um, afterwards we'll talk about tips and advices. So I'll come to that. But I just wanted to let students know that, you know, taking part of local activities, I think it's so important. And it doesn't matter if you're just in Tasmania. Anywhere you go for university study, I think it's really important that. Um, you engage with the community, uh, whether it be on a small scale or a large scale. You know, some students, they go, they do a lot of different things and Rahat will speak a little bit about what he's doing, but you know, and some students take take participate, you know, in, in smaller um, scales and that's fine, you know, so it doesn't matter 
how big or small it is, as long as you're taking part in in any activities, etc. Ellie, what about yourself? Well, I have taken part in many activities, both in both right as part of Utah and outside as well. Uh, as part of Utah, I last semester after the exam, I did join one trip organized by Utah's Life to Launceston campus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very awesome experience. And you know, how much is it? Only $10. <laughs> Only $10? <laughs> yeah, but you touch life. And it's including accommodation for you. You live in student accommodation for one night. And That is amazing. Yeah, but everything, we have free food, free dinner, many born boarding activities in, in Launceston campus. And we met a lot of friends have many activities mm. with students there. So we know that, okay, we know more people. They're also Utah students, but we just live a bit far, far away from each other. I make good friends. Yeah, and then I travel. Yeah, oh. yeah that activities is very awesome, organized by Utah's life that I would recommend yeah. students when they arrive here. It will be, I think, once per, one, once per year. Yeah, so mm. it's a good choice for you. And uh, outside of the university, I also volunteer for a uh, tip shop. Uh, Hoba City Mission, yeah. So wow. it's a yeah, it's a nonprofit organization. So I volunteer there as a retail assistant. So just one day wow. per week, yeah. But I was there to help uh people um are uh, you know like those secondhand stuff people donated. So I will uh help the staff to classify, put the price tag in. And those, you know, just few dollars, like, but it will be the money donated to people who who in help in Hobart in Hobart community. So it's a really cool experience for me. Like, you know, when I live in the city, I, I I believe maybe because it's too busy for us to recognize those small things in our our life. Mm. We yeah, we spend the for one brand new product. We didn't care too much about the price, but after I experienced that in a tip shop like that, I found that okay, I should save more. I should be be more recycling. And yeah, people volunteer there. They are retired people. They are student volunteers, same as me. So I think they they teach they taught me a lot of things. Yeah, and which I that is really amazing. Appreciate it. Yeah. And and look, um, you are the one of the perfect examples of students volunteering. Um, when I was a student, I didn't volunteer as such. I worked a lot part time as a casual. But you know, there's so many opportunities for volunteer work, and what you're doing yes. is so amazing, and it's helping the community. Even if you know, um, sometimes you might think you're not, but you are. You you're helping the staff. You're uh, and on your resume, it's gonna look fantastic. And you know. Australian employers, they love seeing stuff like that. You know, it's all about engaging in the community. It's all about your soft skills, you know, your communication with people, the way you react with people, um, you know, the way you conversate with people. All of those things are important. I mean, studies is important, definitely, to a certain yes. degree. I mean, you need to you need to make sure you're passing your subjects, of course, uh, coming here as an international student. All of that is a given, of course, but at the same time, it's so important that you are doing those things and a lot of other students are doing those things because it just shows that, it just shows what they can bring to the community. And, um, you know, and that, that can change in the future, that can become better and it might turn into something else. Um, it might get even, you know, much bigger than what you thought, you know, whatever, it could start something really small. And, you know, we, we had students yesterday talk about creating societies from scratch and now they've got like 200 200 members in there you know it, it, i i think i like to think of tasmania as a land of opportunity where a lot of the big cities don't provide you that you get you get lost in the crowd whereas in tasmania you you always shine somehow so yeah. whether it be from a small thing like volunteering which i don't think it's a small thing i think it's such an amazing job uh, any sort of volunteering that you do to you know something on a grand scale so i'll move on to rahat do you have any comments on that yeah definitely mona thank you uh, because i would like to bring a different perspective to this aspect like 
just as many provides everyone with unique opportunities depending on what you can do best earlier on i told i said that tasmania is like a treasure island where there are so many opportunities but at the end you will find out that the biggest treasure is yourself because tasmania has this environment these resources in which you will thrive in so many ways then you can decide what you want to stick up to like once i first came to tasmania i started teaching like i would teach ielts or i would teach chemistry to some local college students and then within a few months i started my own startup i named it golden frameworks so what i did is i saw that a lot of the businesses they were not digital fin- friendly at the time so i would be providing them with solutions i would be providing them with technologies resources softwares booking systems this kind of stuff and as a matter of fact it was helping me to earn part time while i'm still studying and then i found that in tasmania we don't have uh, like a halal butcher like we have a growing muslim population as well but there was no specific shop which can cater to their demand so next year with my savings i started at tasmanian prime meat which i think some of you are familiar with so we have been doing pretty well from that and this year we are hoping to do uh, half a million dollars of sales by the end of this year and then i also had this passion for photography so in tasmania i started doing 360 degree photography like some of the university's photos some of other business photos i started doing and now i am um, a google trusted street view photographer and one of the top 1% in australia so those opportunities i never had back in my country which i got in tasmania and while i was studying i was going with technology so that's how i found out about about this event called U Hack which is one of the technology innovation events in Tasmania which gets to be supported by Dell, IBM, Google and many other companies I actually bought all my crest with me but since my webcam is not working I'm not able to show so in 2018 I won the first prize in the student division in U Hack 2018 and then once you have a technological breakthrough it never ends there you need to bring the idea year to the real life so in tasmania they also running another event which is called you pitch 2018 so that is an event where you can go you can pitch your idea in front of investors and you can get mentoring so in 2018 i also won an award for that one these opportunities were never been possible to me before i moved to tasmania so i'm very grateful to the state i believe tasmania is the next silicon valley because good undergrad and and graduate students are coming from the university we have good students studying in the university this is the only university the living cost and other things are still compared to the mainland are pretty low even during this covid-19 period the local government and the university has been very very supportive in terms of providing financial and other helps which would contribute to the students wellbeing so i feel like if anyone has big technological breakthrough ideas they can make it happen in tasmania and since you guys will be coming to the university this year even if you can't come and studying online you can check you hack 2018 they have this online uh, hackathon event happening so if you're a student coming to university of tasmania you will be able to join at the same time after the christchurch event there was a need to organize the ethnic minorities in tasmania so i also worked with uh, a hobart muslim association and australian multicultural association and was being supported by the um, australian uh, social justice department so we developed something called taslim so if you go online you will be able to find it it's going live this week taslim.com.au which will be working as a hub for tasmanian muslims so all these things are happening in tasmania right now and there are lot more to do so if you if you are someone who have this entrepreneurial passion who wants to think outside of the box this many would be the best place to go thank you amazing rahat i mean i don't have any comment um i mean you can see we've got three different students with three different experiences you know um everyone is achieving something for themselves uh it doesn't matter on what spectrum you are in uh you know 
it's it's just amazing to to hear some of our students um, go through these kind of experiences in Tasmania. And it's and even if you haven't started it yet, you can. You know, um, there's nothing stopping you from doing anything here. You know, as long as it's within reason, of course. And you know, um, it does provide that land for you know opportunities um, for students. I am going to wrap it up there. Uh, we are kind of running over time. Um, I did have the slide of any advice or tips for students, but I might actually go on to the questions because we're getting really, really good questions in, which I think would be interesting to answer. Um, so we've got some um, questions here from students. So let me just pick one. There's so many here. Um, I'm not sure if any of you are into sports at all. Someone was asking, how can you join sports teams? Rahat, do you, do you join any, are you with any sports teams? Yes, uh, in this, like Ricky Ponting, he's from the, and he's my favorite ah, yes. cricketer. Also, in Tasmania, in, in our university, we have a lot of clubs. We have kayaking clubs, we have mountain climbing clubs, we have cricket club, we have football club, we have futsal, we have badminton club. So if you're into any type of sport after the orientation week, there is like a club day where you can go and all the clubs and uh, like the societies that are in the university will have their own boots. So it's like a place to get to know each other know about these clubs and you pay really less like maybe five dollars or even free to register we even have karate club so i actually joined a couple uh sometime you know you might not be going too much if you have studies in other ways but many people who go they have good mentors they have good friends it's a it's a really good opportunity that's amazing. Thank you so much, Rahat. I have another question here. Maybe, um, Ellie, you can answer this one. Um, in terms of casual jobs, um, how are you currently working apart from volunteering? Yeah. Yep. So in terms uh, of um, casual jobs, we get a lot of questions, you know, about okay. um, uh, it, can you find a casual job in Australia and Tasmania? You know, um, what's that experience been like for you? I guess a, a few comments on that. I agree, like it's the main concern of most international students because apart mm -hmm. from studying, we want to have some experience. Exactly like me, when the first time I come here, I wanna know how to communicate uh, effectively with people in a working environment, not only university environment. So it's also my main, it was my main concern at that time. But now, apart from my studying, I also the casual staff in Utah, I'm international peer leader. So uh, I am the first part of contact with students and uh, international student mostly. Yep. So it's one kind of amazing experience for me. And I think if I, I would have, um, I, I would give advice like it depends on what you're interested in. For example, yeah. before, before I got this job in Utah, I also did a hospitality job. So I want to be like step by step for me. Like if you want to do a hospitality job, you know, more people is a completely different experience or you want to aim yourself to uh, a professional like office job, something like that. So I think while you're studying, you still can do it, but just plan ahead a bit. For example, if you want to work in the office, something like that. So maybe you must be, you must have a lot of local experience something like that mm. and you can give advice to people but if you just at a starting point i think hospitality like hospitality job would be an awesome experience for you as well yeah yeah and that's a really good point ellie when i was a student i worked as a barista for four years making coffee it was one of my best jobs and um you know i still try to make coffee really well i think i still you know i'd like to think i do but who knows maybe i've lost the touch but you know i worked in um retail as well for four years, you know, throughout my whole yeah. degree I worked. And some students don't like to work and that's okay. If, the, if they just wanna focus on study, that's what they're here for, so that's good. But I always recommend to students, find try some sort of, try a little bit. It doesn't yeah. matter what it is. Again, we're not looking at, at a grand scale, you know, we're, no, no one is looking at, uh, at your resume to make sure you've done X, Y, Z, you know, you've done everything. No one really looks at that. 
as long as you've shown some sort of participation, to be honest, as a student, I did nothing compared to what you guys have done. To be honest, you guys are so far ahead than what I was as a student. And I really applaud you for that because um, a lot of students struggle finding their way. So that's really, really good points, Ellie. Yuan, I'll ask you in terms of um, community. Uh, we have a student here asking, uh, is Tasmania a friendly community? And, and you've traveled a little bit around Australia. Can you give us a few comments on that? Yes, Tasmania has very um, friendly communities. Um, I'll give some example to, to tell, like, for example, um, one of my part-time job, uh, it was introduced by a local friend. Yeah, so here I will bring up for point, like, when you are in Tasmania, you do really need to walk out the door and get to know the local life, do some networking. If you really want to find some part-time job, I think a good start is volunteer. So you can, you know, make more friends, you get to know where the opportunity is, and probably they will, you know, introduce job to you as well. Yeah. Um, here, I want to uh, add some point uh, to the previous uh, uh, question as well. So um, first, it's about the sports communities. Um, mm -hmm. I think uh, besides the orientation weeks, you can also check the TUU website. They got a full list yeah. of all the societies and uh, sports clubs, so you can choose which one you want, and then you know contact them or follow their uh, social media uh, social media um, web page, uh, Facebook or whatever, and then you can find your community in Tasmania. And the other one is about the um, uh, oh, sorry, I'm a little bit <laughs> lost my track. Um, uh, use That's the okay. resource. Yes. Use the resource mm. in university. Um, just like uh, uh, before uh, she mentioned the peer leader jobs, yeah. I was looking at it with, as well, but because my study is like only one year, I'm not qualified with that because at least need to study, you know, two years. Mm. Yes, it's a requirement. Based must on one study. year's uh, experience mm. in Utah's yeah. life. <laughs> so I, I haven't got the chance, but there's a lot of resource we can find in our uh, Utah's community. Uh, apart from the TUU, we can also uh, have uh, the support from our career team. So um, yeah. mm -hmm. have the resource like we can drop in and get our resume to have a look. Someone yeah. gonna review for us when we apply for the job. Uh, um, and another program I am I'm doing is the IPRI internship. Before I graduate, I got chance to, um, you know, uh, do the internship and get to know the uh, office culture in Australia and how to communicate in the office, this kind of thing. So there's a lot of support from our Utah's community. So get to know the platform, get to know the resource, and find out more. You will enjoy the life here more. <laughs> And, you know, it's such a good point, like even within the UTAS community, right, if someone doesn't know how to help you, they'll always refer you to someone else to help and that yes. person will most likely be able to help you. I mean, sometimes students get afraid of approaching someone, but definitely approach. We're all here in the same boat, you know, all students are here doing the same yes. thing. Their intentions are all the same. They want to be good students. They want to do so many things for themselves. And I guess Tasmania has that lifestyle of flourishing. You need to flourish yourself, you know. Uh, I definitely felt that when I first came here as a student. I um, It took me a while, actually, a couple of years, because I studied for six years. And, you know, it took me a while wow. initially to get used to the lifestyle. And <laughs> I did my uh, Bachelor of Business, and then I did my Master's of Professional Accounting specialization in wow. uh, business management. So I actually was an accountant as well for two years. I've done it all. You know, it's it's um, the skills I gained um, living here in Tasmania is very different and and i don't think as rahat mentioned i wouldn't have got it i think if i went to melbourne or sydney or anywhere because um it's a smallerish community where 
um, so many people have so many skills as well where you can gain off from. So it doesn't matter, even the academics, you know, that your teachers, your, your, your lecturers and your tutors, you know, there's a reason why we've won the highest teaching awards. It's because they've got so much skill sets and they come from different backgrounds. And even our own students, they come from different backgrounds, you know, from work experiences. Um, we've got the students who are, um, you know, PhD students, but postgrad, we've got so many, so the community can definitely help. Um, I'm going to wrap it up really quickly. Well, we, we have been having a couple of questions come in, but I just wanted to get this going because, um, you know, I, I think it was such a good session, but I'll start from Bahat. Uh, really quickly, um, if you guys can give an advice or one tip to future students coming in, what would it be? Uh, thank you, Mona. Uh, the, the, the main advice that I'll be giving to my prospective uh, student friends, don't be afraid to ask questions. Nobody's going to judge you. We have some of the best teachers in the whole world. Like once I moved to psychology from engineering, apparently like I don't know anything. So I have to start from the scratch. And every time I go with a question, if I don't understand anything in my lectures, or even if I'm struggling with depression or something in my real life, my faculties have been absolutely helpful. And they are the reasons why I'm here today. Even if it's something in my personal life, I was happy to share that with my faculties and they would be happy to redirect me to maybe the counseling service or any other service that we have in the university. So if you're not asking questions, you will fall behind. So ask as many questions as you can and you will find that Tasmanians are some of the friendliest people in the world. Thank you. Thanks, Rahad. Um, Yuan, any tips? Yeah, I think um, the tips I already mentioned in last uh, question, it's like, you know, get to know your community, use the resource. Yep. Our ad a student advisor, for example, I got a lot of uh, advice from them about visa or study schedule, you know, a lot about life, <laughs> this kind of thing. <laughs> And also like yeah. career connect, a lot of workshop to pro prove yourself in probability. Yeah. Probably you're gonna talk about the next section. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of resource mm. there. Don't just think about this, you know. <laughs> yeah. Don't just think about the, the 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 classroom. Outside the classroom, there's a lot of happening around us. Yeah, then you have I love that tip. Yeah. <laughs> Volunteer opportunities to form the um, connection with local yeah yeah step out and what more. about you ellie thanks um, yuan my, my advice right. is similar as yuan i would say for those of my uh friends in utah's alumni something so i would say always ready to be connected yeah connected here with the community and with utah yeah. as well because as i mentioned utah's is the only one university in this island, mm -hmm. this beautiful island. Yeah, so when you go on the street, you go everywhere in this island. So you belong to Utah's community. It's not like in mainland, like, okay, you're from this uni, you you from that uni, no. All people here That's belong so to true. Utah's community. Yeah, so always ready to be connected. So you don't know what you get, right? So you will get yeah. connected with your community, people speaking the same language with you, same culture, like I mentioned, like mm -hmm. club society. So you will get advice from them as well. And if you connect it yeah. to Utah, everything, maybe before you started your degree, during your degree or after you graduation, I believe that you still yeah. can get support from the Utah community. Thank you so much, guys. We do have to wrap it up. We've gone over time by four minutes. We do have another session starting in about 10 minutes, guys. Um, it's about iPrep and employability. We're going to have two wonderful speakers speak to us. Um, please use the same link to join in that session in 10 minutes. Um, Yuan, Ellie, and Rahat, thank you guys so much. You've been awesome. Good luck with your exams. I know you guys have exams at the moment. Yes. Thank you so much for joining and keep up the Utah spirit. Take care, guys. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Take care, guys.